and welcome to the No Zone. My name is Wanja. I'm Charlie. And I'm Marara. <gasps> oh, oh, oh. Bless you, Marara. What's wrong? Oh, uh, oh, no. oh, thank you, Charlie. Oh, it's just a small cold, but I'll be all right. I'll be OK. We hope so, because we have a great show lined up for today. That's right. We have our bears with Maspidi. We have Teacher Pendo in the learning zone. And of course, we have number one. But before we get to all of these exciting bits in our show, we still have our studio guests to meet. That's right. They're waiting for us in the chill out zone. Come along. Hello, everyone. Hello. How are you today? Let's say a big hello to everyone who is watching us at home. Hello! Well, we're really excited to have you here with us on today's show. We're going to have a lot of fun. Oh, well, oh, oh, oh. Sorry I'm late. I had to blow my nose. Oh, have you said hello to everyone at home without me? Yes! Oh. Everyone, Marara today is unwell. So let's wish him well. Get well soon, Marara! <laughs> oh, thank you. I feel much better just being on the dozen. And I'm looking forward to find out about today's buzzwords. Who can tell us what today's Nozon buzzwords are teaching us about? They're teaching us about health. That's Good, right. Nasira. They are teaching us about health. But what are the buzzwords? Handkerchief. Injury. Health. Blood. Nash. Now, for you at home, I hope that you wrote down those buzzwords. Now, try and see how many of them you can spot in our next program. It's time for Junction Genius. We need to give her first aid before that. She's in so much pain. What can we possibly do? We are not doctors. First aid is important because it will stop you from getting any further serious injuries before the doctor can attend to you. I wish Nita and Leleti were here. They always know how to go about such things. Stop panicking. We are here and we must do something. Here, use this to rub her arm. No, we can't. But it will swell even more. Amishi might have a broken arm. All we need to do is make a sling which will support her arm before the doctor can attend to her. Uh, here, use this. It will reduce the pain. No! Rubbing will only make it worse. We might even end up breaking her bone completely. Uh, okay, so what do we do? What are you doing? I'm going to use the sweater to make a sling which will support her arm and stop any more pressure on the swelling. Ah! Come on, Amishi, this is serious. You're the most difficult patient to treat. Do you even know why people are given first aid before being taken to hospital? I think it's a waste of time. First aid is important in treating injured people. Now, give me the steps you follow when giving first aid. Do I really have to? Ah. If you refuse, I will suggest you be suspended from the hideout. Junction Juniors help people, and so you must know first aid. <laughs> My biscuits. Get up quickly. He's catching up. I can't. My leg hurts. 
Stop being weak. Get up and run. I can't. My leg hurts. Uh. Oh, Freddy, don't leave me here. My leg hurts. Uh. Please, don't hurt me. Please, I need help. Uh. Okay. Please, okay. I need help. Relax, relax. Oh, yeah. Let me go get my friends. I'm going to help you. Okay. Wait, how long will you be? It will take me five minutes to find my friends, ah. two minutes to explain what has happened, and another five minutes to return. How long will I be gone for? Now's not the time to be asking me stupid math questions. Go and get your friends. Okay, 12 yes. minutes, 720 seconds. I'll be back. Ah, quickly, please. You should seek professional medical help as soon as possible. First aid is all about helping someone when they're hurt. And sometimes it's just about reassuring the patients that they are going to be okay. But I still oh. don't see when... Password! Oh, this is an emergency. Then you better spell the word quickly. Health. H-E-A-L-T-H. -H. Happy? <laughs> It is Amos. What about Amos? I was chasing after him and Freddy when they stole my biscuits. But then Amos got hurt. So it serves him right. How can you say that? I come on, Bakari. He's the most shameless bully I've ever met. We are the Junction Juniors. Mm. And we help people no matter what. Come on, let's go help him. See? A chance to practice first aid skills. has arrived. I'm sorry, I will never take your biscuits again. I will not even smell them. Now let's just concentrate on getting you better. Is it just your leg that hurts Amos? And can you walk on it? No, I've tried, but it is too painful. Okay, we need to get help as soon as possible. But the hospital is so far away. But we could carry him on our back. No, we can't. We might injure him further if we don't carry him in the right way. Ah, so now what are we going to do? I know. I should go and get help from the health centre while you remain here with Amos. Good idea. We will try and move Amos close to the health centre without making his injury worse. Now, off you go. How are we going to move? stretcher and carry him. First of all, we need some strong sticks. What is it, Brian? Amos is out and he's in the woods. Calm down. I hope he's not alone. No, I left him with the other juniors. They were trying to figure out a way to carry him. What happened to him? He was running in the woods and hurt his leg. Let me grab my first aid kit, okay? Enough, huh? I think so. Give me your sweater. Why? We need it to make the stretcher. But I'm telling you, if anything happens to my sweater, hey, it is your fault. Okay, here's mine as well. The only thing remaining is someone to test it. No, I'm not getting on that stretcher. Too bad. Come on, Amishi. You are the lightest here. We made the stretcher. The least you can do is test it. OK, let's place the stretcher next to him. So, Amos, can you get onto the stretcher without putting any weight on your leg? I think so. He's on. Are you sure it's going to support him? Yes. I'm sure we could carry him for miles if we needed to. Right.
everyone. Hi, Hi Nagas kids. kids. I'm impressed with your sweatshirt. It looks very well made. <gasps> Thank you very much. I must say you've done a very good job. Well done. Well, knowing first aid is very important for the people who are sick or hurt. Okay, Amos, I know your leg is sore, but I don't think it's broken. We need to take you to the health center so that Dr. Charles can take a look at it and make sure everything is okay. Thank you. I must say you have done a great job today. I think some of you could have a career in medicine, huh? Oh. Mm. Junction Juniors, do you think you can continue to carry Amos all the way to the health center? Oh. <coughs> uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of why not? Of yeah. course, why not? Yes. Yeah. Well, what an eventful day. Yeah, we're able to put our first aid skills to the test. But what about my biscuits? We did the right thing, helping someone when they were hurt. Come on, let's go home. Yeah. Hey, I see you've made new friends. What friends? I saw them helping you. Because my supposed real friend abandoned me when I got hurt. I have to save the biscuits. You chose the biscuits instead of your friend. Talking about biscuits, we should give them back. What? We should give them back to the Junction Juniors, saying thank you to them for helping me. I don't think we should. And besides, your leg is cured now. It's either that or me and you are done. Hello, Junction Juniors. Hi, Hi Amos. Hi. Is the leg better now? Yes, Dr. Charles said I've just sprained my ankle and put a bandage on it and gave me this crutch to use it for the next few days. Oh, that's good news. And I saw what do you want here. I've just come to say thank you for helping. Here are your biscuits. Aye. These biscuits are in a small packet. Mine are in a bigger box. Biscuits are just biscuits. They're the same. Uh-uh. No. The bigger the box, the larger the volume. So that means my biscuits were more. Hi. At least they came to say sorry. Yeah, just accept his apology. So, does that mean we are no longer enemies? It just means we are now even. Who would have thought that this would have happened? Yes, and at least Brian got his biscuits back. And I miss you got to learn the importance of first aid. Come on, come on, come on. Junction Juniors forever! Yeah! Junction Juniors! Whoa, that was amazing. The way the Junction Juniors came together to help the bully Amos. I think it was very, very good. That's true. The buzzwords are about health. So which ones did you hear? Amos had an injury on his leg. Very good. The password was health. Excellent. I had the word nurse when the Junction Juniors went to get nurse scared. What else did you learn? Tell me, Bene. If someone bullies you, you can still be kind to them. Very good. That's right. Yes, Lulu? I learned that even if someone is not your friend, if they help you, you should say thank you. Oh, yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah, that's true. I was saying thank you to the Junction Juniors for helping him. Oh, yes, <laughs> that's true, Mara, that's true. I can see that everyone has learned a lot from that Junction Juniors. <laughs> oh, 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 hey, 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 everyone. <laughs> that's my favorite sound. It's time for... and welcome back to today's Cool Words. Are you all ready for some learning fun? Yes! yes! Now, before we get started, I have some lost items in my lost property box. Now, whose sweater is this? Yes, Lulu? That's Bayana's sweater. Bayana, you should be more careful with your things. There you go. Whose pencil case is this? Yes, Dao? It is Charo's pe pencil case. Charo? And whose shoe is this? Oh, 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 oh. that is Bayane's shoe. Come on, Bayane. How did you get home with the one shoe and no sweater? 
good. Now let's get started on today's lesson. Now all the answers you've given me today are related to what we are learning about. You said Bayenne's sweater, Charo's pencil case, and Bayenne's shoe. Now who knows the name of the mark that appears before the S in those words? Yes, Hugiru? I think it is called an apostrophe. Well, don't hesitate. You're absolutely right. It's called an apostrophe. Can we say that together? Apostrophe. Good. Now let's look at one use of the apostrophe. We said Bayenne's sweater. Now the S shows that Bayenne owns the sweater. It shows possession. Oh, teacher Pedro, does that apply to Charles' pencil case and Bayere's shoe? Yes, it does. It applies to all. All this is singular, which means it refers to one owner. Now, let's try and make this sentence into possessive using the apostrophe. Now, the ring of the bride. Yes, Kipsang? You could say the bride's ring. Very good. How about this sentence? The engine of the car. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, let, let me try, let me try. Go right ahead, Marara. Uh, we could say the car's engine. Very good. Now remember, all these show one owner. Now when referring to plural nouns ending with S or ES, we add the apostrophe at the end. That's, that's very confusing. What do you be, teacher Pedro? Not to worry, Marara. Let me give you examples. Now, the football belonging to the boys will be the boys' football. The hats of the ladies will be the ladies' hats. Oh, now I get it. So the tails of the monkeys will be the monkey's tails. But when the plural noun does not end with S, we add the apostrophe and then the S, okay? For example, the children's homework. Okay, now can you give me some examples? Yes, Nelly. The men's shoes with the apostrophe between N and S. Very good, someone else? Yes, Naswira. The policeman's boots with the apostrophe between N and S. Very good, anyone else? Yes, Dal. The women's handbag with the apostrophe between N and S. Very good, Mara, do you want to try? Oh, yes. The mice's tails with the apostrophe between E and S. Very good. Well done, all of you. Now you know exactly what an apostrophe is. And I'm hoping you are making your own sentences and using the apostrophe at home. Why don't you keep practicing? Because next lesson, I'll be showing you another use of the apostrophe. Well, we're hoping Maspeedy is healthy and ready to take us out there. <laughs> that I know very little on first aid. Yet every day I'm out there on my bicycle riding up and down, taking milk to my customers. What if I fail and got some bruises or cut my finger? What can I do? Oh, wait. Oh, I'm told that the St. John Ambulance trainers are going to demonstrate how to administer first aid on the most common accidents in our homes and even schools. Come on, join me in out there. And the pupils here at Happyland Primary School in Buruburu are eager to learn with us too. Choking is bad and really uncomfortable. If someone is choking, get them to bend slightly over and administer four sharp blows on the back. But if you are a trained first aider, pass your arm around them and pull sharply inwards and upwards towards the casualty's ribs. Then check that the object has cleared. If someone faints, raise and support the legs of the casualty to encourage the flow of blood into the brain. Check if he or she is still breathing. Then loosen all tight clothing around the casualty's neck, chest and waist region. Upon recovering, give the casualty something to drink, maybe some glucose solution or milk. For bruises, make the casualty sit in a comfortable position. 
and then press an ice pack wrapped on a piece of cloth on the injured area. This prevents swelling and relieves pain. For nose bleeding, you should advise the casualty to open and breathe using their mouth. Then ask the casualty to pinch the soft part of the nose, releasing gently after 10 minutes to check if the bleeding has stopped. If the bleeding doesn't stop after half an hour, take the casualty to hospital in the treatment position. But in cases of emergency like accidents, the patient gets first aid in the ambulance before he gets to the doctor or nurse for treatment at the hospital. In cases of accidents, ambulance services are absolutely free. Also, you can use an ambulance to transport or transfer your patient from one place to another. In case of emergency, the number to call is 999. Understanding first aid is very important. I hope that we will put into practice what we have learned today and help the society around us. Oh, they are in such a hurry. So bye for now and thank you a lot for this important lesson. Wow, being a doctor is such an amazing job, isn't it? Yes! Yeah, and I like the fact that they treat people and make them feel better. Oh, uh, I think I should see the doctor too. Oh, Marara, I don't think that uh, doctors treat lions. But I know something that's going to cheer you up. It's time for... Number Run! Yay! Now, this is a game that we invented so that we could help Marara with his maths. <laughs> Yeah, please, help me. <laughs> now, the game is very simple. On the blackboard, there are three sums. Now, they're all just like this example sum right here. If you notice, there's a little something missing from the sum. Now, all our number runners have to do is solve the sum and go look for the solution in the number pit, like this. Now, we didn't want to make it too easy, so you have to look for the solution among all of the numbers that you see here. Once you find that number, like this, you need to go back to the blackboard. When you get here at the board, you need to make sure you put your number in the correct position, like that. Make sure you don't get your numbers mixed up, because the moment this number is here, it's stuck and you cannot change it. That's right. Now, once you've solved the sum, you have to run, run, run across to your teammates and tag in the person to do the next sum, just like this. There's a catch. You have three sums to solve in just 45 seconds. So, we all need to cheer our number runners with the correct answer. Have you understood? Yes! Very now, good. We must all remember that with number run, speed is everything. Because if you do manage to solve the three sums in 45 seconds, you get to take these wonderful maths books back to your school. Are the rules clear? Yes! Are you ready? Yes! Excellent. Let's have our number runner, number one, here, please. Let's put 45 seconds on the clock. Reveal that first sum. What plus 26 is 50? Go. Help me with the right answer, please. You only have 45 seconds. You sure that's your final answer? Tag the next person. Tag the next person. Five multiplied by what is 35? Go. <laughs> well done, Kipsa. Well done. You ran out of well time, done, but well don't done. worry. <laughs> Not to worry, you ran out of time, don't worry. But we'll look at what you what you didn't do together. Let's start with sum number one. We asked you, 
What plus 26 is 50? You gave us 24. Is 24 the correct answer? Yes! Very good. 24 is the correct answer. And on to the second sum, we asked you 5 multiplied by what is 35? You gave us 7. Is that the correct answer? Yes! Are you sure? Yes! And we will quickly go through the third sum, which you didn't manage to complete. And this would have been it. 48 divided by 6 is what? What would have been the answer? 8. 8. 8 would have been the answer. Oh, you just ran out of time. So we'll put it together. And voila. So, oh. you managed to complete one out of three sums. That's all right, don't worry, because you ran out of time. Let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Yo, yeah, well. Don't worry, because you are all winners. You have helped me with my maths <gasps> homework. <laughs> yeah, you're winners. <laughs> Did you all have fun? Yeah! We still have half an hour of fun and learning right here on the No Zone. So don't go anywhere. We will be right back. <laughs> Why don't you tell us what today's no zone buzzwords are? Handkerchief. Injury. Health. Blood. Nash. Very good. So let's remember that today's buzzwords are all about health. So we shall listen out for them throughout this show. Oh yes, that's right. Now, Marara, could you please give us a, give us a bit of a hint as to what animal Ranger Rukia is going to be teaching us about today? Well, Charlie, if lions are the kings of the jungle, then these animals are the kings of the sky. That's obviously a bird. Question is, which bird? Let's find out together in the Wild Zone. Hello, Nose on Rangers. I am Reja Rukia. Wow! Did you see that big bird nose on Rangers? Well, today, we are going to learn all about that beautiful bird, the king of the sky. This magnificent bird is called a fish eagle. It is only found in Africa. It is called a fish eagle because it loves eating fish. Mmm, yummy. Its head and tail are white in color, while its wings and torso are black and brown. It has a yellow beak with a sharp black point and deadly claws. Just look at it, it's so majestic, it looks like a painting. The fish eagle lives in an environment where there are lots of other birds and animals that eat fish as well. This includes storks, herons, and scary crocodiles. Sometimes, the fish eagle must fight for its food. They can be very cheeky and even work in pairs to steal fish from other birds. those different calls made by the fish eagle? The fish eagle has one call to mark its territory and a different mating call to attract its mate. Just like twins, the fish eagle is always seen in pairs of male and female. Fish eagles love staying together as a family. They even share their food. Their favorite type of fish is the catfish and the lungfish. At times, the fish eagles eat flamingos and other water birds. It also feeds on insects. The fish eagle is very big. Its length varies from 65 centimeters to 75 centimeters. It has strong bones, which it gets from eating lots of fish. Fish is good for the fish eagle's health and also for our own health. By eating lots of fish, we get vitamin D, which gives us strong bones and energy just like the fish eagle. The fish eagle hunts with its sharp eyes. When it sees a fish in the water, it swoops down and catches it with its feet. 
This fish eagle does not mind getting a little wet when catching its tasty fish. They hunt during the day, mostly in the morning. As you know, the early bird catches the worm. Well, that's all for now, Nozone Rangers. I hope you enjoyed learning about the magnificent fish eagle. Until next time, bye! Wild Zone is so amazing! That's right. I think eagles are the most beautiful birds in the sky. And with their sharp claws, they can catch fish right out of the water. Mm, I think I'm hungry. I want some fish. Uh, Ma, you're <laughs> always hungry. I know what that sound means. It's time for Hot Numbers. and welcome back to Hot Numbers. Today we will learn all about volume. Oh, I think I am going to enjoy this lesson. Why do you feel that way, Marara? Because volume is easy to understand. You turn it up to make it louder and you turn it down to make it quieter. See, I've got it. <laughs> no, Marara, that's not the kind of volume I am talking about. Oh, I didn't know there was another kind of volume. Well, don't worry. You'll learn all about volume in just a minute. Now here, I have some boxes. Now these boxes are of different sizes. Now volume is the amount of space in the boxes. Now if we were to fill them up with objects, then we would say the container with the most objects has a larger volume. Aha! So we can say the bigger box has a larger volume than the small box. So far, so good. Now volume is a space a solid figure contains or occupies. Now here, I have a small box whose height, length and width are of the same size. Now this is a three-dimensional shape. What do we call it? Yes, Bayane? Cube. Yes, it's called a cube. Now all its sides are equal. Volume is measured in cubic units. We can use some empty match boxes to calculate volume by counting. Now each group pick um, any amount of empty match boxes and arrange them in a layer. So how many boxes have you laid out? Yes, Dao? Three. Very good. So we can say the volume of this layer is three match boxes. How about this group? Yes, Lulu? We have laid out five match boxes. Very good. So the volume is? Five match boxes. Well done. Let's stack up three more match boxes on top of this first layer. Now we have two layers which form a stack. Oh, 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 I see the bottom layer has three match boxes and the top layer has three match boxes. Mm -hmm, that's right. And if we were to add them up together, what would we get? Six match boxes. That's right. Now we can get volume by counting how many boxes we have stacked together. Now, why don't you try stacking 10 match boxes in two layers? Very good. So how many match boxes do we have on the top layer? Yes, Hugiru? One, two, three, four, five. And the second layer? Five. And the last layer? Five. To get the volume of this stack, we need to add the total of the three layers. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Yes, Mararo? Oh, we would add up five match boxes mm -hmm. plus five match boxes plus five match boxes, which is equals to? Excellent. So our volume is 15 match boxes. Now let's try one more. I will put four match boxes here. Now can someone add another layer? Okay, very good. Now someone else put, an, put another layer? Put 
put another layer as well. So how many matchboxes are in the top layer? Yes, Hugiru? Four. Very good. And the next layer? Yes, Bayene? Four. Very good. The next layer? Yes, Nelly? Four. And what about the last layer? Four. So what do we do to find the volume of this stack? Oh, I know, I know, I know. Yes, Marara? Uh, that's four plus four plus four plus four. Which equals? Sixteen. Excellent. Our volume is 16 match boxes. Well, that brings us to the end of our hot number session. Now, today we learned how to find volume by counting. When you get to the higher classes, you will learn how to find volume by multiplying. Now, do you know any other use of ordinary soap? Well, let's find out more on Art Zone. <laughs> Hi kids, guess what? I have a small car and then here I have a frog and all this is just ordinary soap. We'll think of a very nice creative way to make a simple sculpture with you. So first of all, I get my tool. This is a standing knife. This is dangerous again to use. Get somebody big to help you. And today I want to make a crocodile. First, do the sketch on the top side and get it to scale the head and then the body comes all the way down here and the tail. The legs will go out here and the behind legs again this side. So this is my basic structure for the crocodile. First I remove the excess uh, unnecessary parts I don't need and I cut deep in all around the sketch. Again the knife is dangerous so you have to use it like carefully. So that's my first area chucked out. We'll go to the other leg and the body. So you can see the front leg and the back one here. So it's facing backwards. And soap is soft, so you don't need to use a knife, only you can use a stick, like a flat wooden stick to cut through. So kids. Now this is the basic shape of my crocodile. Next, I will need to now go into details and carve in between here, in between the spaces to create more the shape and also the profile needs to follow a contour. From now onwards, I'll be using mostly the tip of the knife to give it the shape. You have to be careful so that you don't dig too much and then makes, which will make the entire figure fragile and it can break. So I need to leave some areas like the neck, the tail a bit chunky so that they don't break off. Now what I want to go to is to start to bring the shape of the top parts, which side is high, which one is lower. So I start by removing the corners here and then the legs are much lower than the body. So I can dig in here, the side of the stomach. I'm trying to make it round now. Again, the same with the tail, and I curve it around. You can also cut in to make the mouth. This is delicate. So kids, this is my sculpture which has just begun. I will continue and try and finish it much better. And I hope you will try to make one at home. But as for now, I'll see you next time. Ciao. Wow, I, I, I really enjoyed that art zone. How about you? Did you all enjoy that? Yes! yes. Now, Marara, what is going on? Oh, I'm just carving some soap. But, oh, oh it, it's so slippery. It's, it keeps getting away. Marara, you're not supposed to use wet soap. Oh, you don't? Then how do you get your, your paws clean? Okay. <laughs> all right then. We are going to change the subject and we're going to put on our thinking caps. It's time for spell it. Animal, animal chapter, building, narrow, building, respect, building, respect, respect, deep, vegetable, work work, 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 work. Hello everyone. Welcome to spell it. Bayane, Lulu, and Dao. 
You're about to step out of the shadows and into the light to compete for the top prize of the Nozon Spelling Champion. If you win, you will go home with your very own Nozon Dictionary. Now each contender has just 30 seconds to spell correctly as many words as possible. If you want to hear the word again, just say repeat and the word will be repeated for you. Now each word is worth one point. So the more words you spell correctly, the greater your chances of winning. Are the rules clear? Yes. Bayene, you're up first. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Bayene, your 30 seconds start now. Cut. C A T. Ward. Huh? Uh, repeat. Ward. W A R D. Grave. G-R-A-Z-E Blood B-L-O-O-D Health H-E-A-L-T-H -H. Dustbin D-U-S-T-B-I-N Doctor D-O-C-T-O-R Hygiene H-Y Time is up. up. Well done. Lulu, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Lulu, your 30 seconds start now. Ill. I double L. Sick. S I C K. Cure. Please repeat. Cure. C U R E. Needle. N double E D L E. Injured. I N J U R E D. Bandage. B A N D A G E D. Hospital. H O S P I T A L. Ambulance. A M B U L A N C E. Syringe. S Y R I N G E. Time, Time is up. up. Dow, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Dow, your 30 seconds start now. Aid. A-I-D. Trim. T-R-I-M. Nurse. N-U-R-S-E. Breath. B-R-E-A-T-H-E. -E. Injury. I-N-G-U-R-Y. Treat. T-R-E-A-T. -E Patient. P-A-T-I-E-N-T. -E Injection. I N G E C T I O N. Dispensary. D I S. -S Time is up. Well done. Well, we won't drag this out for too long. We'll get straight to the results. Now, in third place, having spelled six words correctly, we have. Bayene, let's give him a round of applause. Let's give him a round of applause. Well done. Now, the difference between the runner-up and first place is one point. I'll start with Lulu. Lulu, you were asked to spell the word bandage. Instead, you spelled bandaged. You added a D at the end, so you didn't get that point. Dao. You were asked to spell breath. You added an E at the end, thus you spelled breathe. So you didn't get that point either. So now we can say that our winner with eight points is Lulu. Congratulations. Let's give a round of applause. Well Step forward, Lulu. Congratulations, Lulu. You are today's Nozo Spelling Champion. Show everyone at home your dictionary. Well Let's give another round of applause. Woo! Good, good. Congratulations to each one of you because you spelled very many words correctly. Now, after that tense round of spell it, I think it's time we all take a little bit of a break. So why don't we sit back, relax, we'll be in the chill-out zone enjoying another one of our African tales. Hello 
everyone. I hope you're all sitting comfortably. I am going to read you a story about a king, a queen, and a giant. I hope you enjoy it. The Giant's Tale. Once upon a time, there lived a king who ruled over a large and plentiful land. He was a strong and healthy king and had many guards who protected him and his beautiful wife, Queen Nema. They needed protecting because they lived next to the land of the giants. One day, Queen Nema fell very, very sick. The king took her from one hospital to another, but no one knew how to cure her. Some doctors took her blood with a needle. Some bathed her in cool water, but none of the doctors or nurses who treated her were able to cure the ailing queen. The king sat in his palace, deep in thought about what to do. Suddenly, a poor old woman turned up at their palace. She bowed before the king. What is this poor old woman doing in my palace? grumbled the king. I know someone who can cure your wife, the old woman announced. Please, old woman, tell me who can heal my wife, the king begged. Me, answered the old woman. The king could not believe that a poor old woman could heal his wife, but he was so desperate, he was prepared to try anything. The king asked the woman to go and cure his wife, but the old woman said, Your Highness, I can only cure the queen with a giant's tail. The king was so desperate for his wife to be healthy, he agreed and quickly ordered his guards to venture into the land of the giants and bring him a giant's tail. The guards were very frightened because the giants were known to be very dangerous creatures. They whispered amongst themselves, arguing about who should go to the land of the giants. Then one very brave guard called Mshuja stepped forward and offered to bring the king a giant's tail. Mshuja was ordered to leave immediately and the whole town gathered to watch him ride his camel bravely into the land of the giants. He rode and rode until eventually he saw a giant's house in the distance. Finally, he arrived at the house and knocked on the door. A woman's voice boomed from inside the house. Who dares to knock on my door? I come in peace, Mshuja replied politely. Please, kind woman, let me in. The old giant lady opened the door and welcomed Mshuja into her home. What's wrong, young man? she asked and Shuja told her the whole story. As soon as it was dark, Mshuja and the old woman heard the booming voices of the giant men coming home. The old woman giant urged Mshuja to hide in a basket that was in the corner of the room. Mshuja jumped in the basket just as a group of giants walked in. One of the giants sniffed the air and exclaimed, I can smell a human being and they all looked around the room, under the table, and behind the curtains, but they didn't look in the basket where Mshuja was shaking with fear. The old woman giant quickly brought out a delicious stew, and the giant men forgot about the smell of humans. They ate hungrily and then fell fast asleep. The sound of their snoring echoed around the room. Then very bravely and very quietly, Mshuja climbed out of the basket and moved very, very slowly towards the sleeping giants. With a sharp knife, he quickly sliced off the tail of the oldest giant who let out a loud yelp. But before the giant had time to find out what had cut him, Mshuja had leapt on his camel and was galloping home. All the giants woke up and rushed off to find out who had cut off their friend's tail. But because they were on foot and Mshuja was on a camel, they were unable to catch up with him. And Mshuja was able to cross to the border to safety. When Mshuja reached the palace, he presented the giant's tail to the old woman. The old woman took the tail and bathed it in clean water. Then the old woman took the giant's tail and tied it with a bandage to the sick queen's arm. 
All night, the king and the old woman watched the queen, hoping and praying that she would recover. The next morning, the king awoke to find that Queen Nemo was cured. The king was so happy that he rewarded Mshuja by making him the head of his guards. And the poor old woman was invited to live in the palace where she lived happily and peacefully for the rest of her life. The end. Wasn't that an interesting story? I really hope you enjoyed it. Now be sure to let me know if you see a giant without a tail. Well, that's it for today. I hope to see you soon again. Bye. A great story that's right and this is the perfect way for us to end our show today did you all enjoy the story yes well thank you so much for coming to help us with the show today we had so much fun having you here did you all enjoy the show yes we loved being with you here today and for you at home we greatly enjoyed your company but for now it's time to say goodbye bye, bye.